Good morning. Welcome, brothers and sisters in faith in Christ Jesus. Today, our Bible study takes us back to the Old Testament, to the book of Exodus, chapter 2. Now, you might say, oh boy, yay, I'm excited about learning about Exodus, chapter 2. But the story in Exodus, chapter 2 is actually, I think, one of my favorite in all of the Old Testament. And it's the story of Moses and his early life. And we have to not just know the story of what happened to Moses, but we have to remember why Moses was that little baby that was floating around in a basket. So to understand that, we have to go back in time just a little bit to the story of Joseph and his brothers. And you might recall that Joseph was sold into slavery, ended up in Egypt, and became the number two person in power in the whole country. He did that to save his people, to save his family. And so they came and they lived in Egypt. And you might recall they lived in Egypt for over 350 years. Well, during those 350 years, one of the three promises that God gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob came true. They became a great nation, a nation of over two million people. Now, with that many people, the, the, after Joseph had long been gone and forgotten, the Pharaoh at that time became feeling very paranoid about this group of people. And so the Pharaoh, fearing that they would be, rise to become a great army, made this unbelieving, paranoid plan. Every boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. How evil of a thought can you possibly have? But God would use this sinful decree and his people's faithful response would follow because God would use this to bring about his deliverer for his people. And that deliverer will be Moses. I would like to read portions of Exodus 2 to remind you about really who Moses was and how God brought this about. Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman. And she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. And when he could hide him no longer, he got a papyr she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. You probably remember that story about Moses the most. Imagining a little baby floating down the Nile River with all of those crocodiles and, and no, not knowing what's going to happen to them. Their trust was put into God. And so God intervened. We read on, then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile. She saw the basket among the reeds. She opened it and saw a baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to take care of the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl, Moses' sister, went and got the baby's mother. Well, you know the rest of the story. Moses' mother ended up taking care of him for probably two or three years, preschool, teaching him the stories about the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so a faith was lit in, Ab in Moses. So the next part of the story is, is that Moses was prepared in a very unique way by now being turned over to the Pharaoh's daughter, raised in the finest of education. The book of Exodus goes on in chapter 11 and following to describe how Moses thought that he was the leader that God wanted him to be, but it really wasn't his time yet. He incorrectly thought that he could stop a, an Egyptian by killing him who was beating up a, a fellow Israelite, forced Moses to flee from Pharaoh because he was a wanted man. In many ways, God blessed Moses while he was in Midian. He was there for 40 years. Apart from finding a wife named Zipporah and having a son, for 40 years, Moses changed. Moses was humbled. Moses was prepared by God very uniquely to be the leader that he needed him to be so that Israel could be saved and the promise of the Savior would be carried forward. God heard their groaning, it says, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites 
and was concerned about them. God hears us in our time of need too. We're reminded in 1 John chapter 5, this is the confidence we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. I have a lot of friends that have needs. I have needs. You have needs. Spiritual needs, physical needs, emotional needs. Our families have needs. And we have a God who is here to deliver us. We know that our true deliverance isn't just getting out of trouble, but our true deliverance comes from understanding that Jesus is the true purpose of God's plan to save us. God saved Moses so that the promise of the Savior could go forward. That Savior is Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord and Savior. We are thankful for having a God who now uses us to bring others to faith and the forgiveness of salvation that he has done for us that we get to share. Believe, trust, love, and live for Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, when the future seems bleak and uncertain, remind us of your faithfulness and love. Although we may not know what the future holds, we know that you hold the future. In our Savior's name we pray. Amen.